We're here at Power's original distillery in John's Lane in the heart of Dublin. James Power set up his tavern here just outside the walls of Dublin in 1785. And in 1791, he concentrated on distilling because his whiskey had become so popular. From 1791 until 1976, on this site, they made Powers whiskey. The first job of the distillery workers in the morning was to come out onto Thomas Street and sweep outside the distillery. They wanted anybody approaching the distillery to be really impressed by how beautiful it was and by how clean it was. Powers was one of the biggest distilleries in Dublin, and it took an awful lot to keep that going. Along here, we have our workshops where we would have had our engineers, our woodworkers, our brickmakers. We were almost completely self-sufficient. We even had our own fire brigade. Here we are at the Granary Building. When it was built in 1817, it was one of the most modern buildings in Ireland. Inside is a standing beam steam engine, which would have driven all the mechanisms inside. On the top level, the roof is held up by oak arches. The attention to detail up there is absolutely fabulous. By the late 1800s, this distillery was producing almost a million gallons of spirit a year. We're going to head over here and talk to one of Power's descendants, Dennis O'Reilly. Hey, Dennis. Hey, Michael. Good to see you. And you. Thanks for coming down to see us. Pleasure. So tell me a little bit more about your family's connection. So my great-grandfather married Fanny Power, and, uh, and from that, generations of our family have worked here. Dad was the sole person in Powers who traveled the world selling the product. Like what I do now. He was on a plane, what I remember growing up all the time. He had this passport, which was stamped to death. You know, it was, <laughs> it was, it was like a book. Uncle Joe was in charge of the bottling and Uncle Frank ended up being the chairman. By the 1960s, Irish whiskey had gone from being the biggest selling whiskey in the world to being on its knees. And Cork Distillers Company in Middleton Powers in Dublin and Jemison in Dublin, they all had to come together really just to save Irish whiskey. That connection of your family to be there at the moment that the decision was made to save Irish whiskey, it's really, really cool. You know, if they hadn't done that, God only knows where Irish whiskey would be now. When we were down in the archive in Middleton and we were looking at the documents that were around at the formation of Irish Stillers, I remember just being really impressed by all the names on it. And then when you came over and you started looking at it, tell us about how you felt. I felt proud, number one. I felt slightly emotional because yeah. I saw Uncle Frank as the chairman, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Joe, yeah. and most of all, Reggie, my dad, yeah. as the signatories. These are the old stills here in John's Lane. Originally, they, this, we would have been sitting inside. There was originally five stills here. Two stills at the back are what they call offset stills, so the swan neck is off to the side. Um, this was very deliberate. It was one of the things that contributed to the flavour profile of Paris, and they were very meticulous about how they constructed their stills. The bricks around the stills, actually, they would have popped broken quite regularly, expanding and contracting all the time. That's why we had brick workers on site. It's just fascinating looking at the old machinery. Even 43 years ago, this, what was being done here was, was really innovative. The anthracite would have been shoveled into this bin here. And with these levers, you could control how much anthracite was being brought into the fire underneath the stills. It meant that you had total control over your distillation process. This was very, very unique to powers. And it just meant and then showed how much of an attention, again, to detail they had, not just about their machinery, but about their spirit. That detail is amazing. It's absolutely stunning. Can you tell us a little bit about the connection between the Powers family and the staff? Well, they were treated as family. They were invited to family gatherings. They had sports days. I know it sounds bonkers, but they actually <laughs> had sports days down at Edinburgh. I remember talking to some ex-staff members who would have known your uncle, he wasn't Chief Executive O'Reilly, he was Frank. It wasn't, sir, it wasn't. It was just a togetherness. It was, it was pretty special, I'd say, to work here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you felt fairly uh, much part of the family. What's it like walking around the distillery? Fr pretty damn cool, you know? Mm -hmm. You're thinking of all the, the rallies that were here and uh, all of the generations of them um, having been part of what, what powers is and what it became, you know, yeah. it's just pretty, pretty, pretty cool to say the least. Mm -hmm.